Because of the solemnity of the service tonight, I wanted to let you know that all of the songs, all the hymns will be sung as being seated. Would you join me in the call to worship? If I say, let the darkness cover me, and the light around me turn to night, the darkness is not dark to you, O oh God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Would you join me in singing our first hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, hymn number 197. for the shadow of light. God be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you give us the sun to illumine the day and the moon and the stars to shine by night. Kindle in us the flame of your love that our lives may shed abroad the radiance of your light and the world may be full of the splendor of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness. Amen. Let us pray.
holy and loving God. We need you near us tonight as we dare to walk from the table to the cross with you. We ask that your presence would not comfort us, but instill us with humility. The humility to know that all is grace, that apart from you, we are lost. But with you, all things are possible. We ask that your spirit would speak to us in words so deep that they are beyond putting into words, that symbols that and, and things that we say so easily that we would feel deeply as we walk with you tonight. Help us to never take your love for granted or the price that you paid to show such magnificent love. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me now in the hymn that we sing as we approach the table? O sacred head now wounded, hymn number 202.
tonight. Tonight we will be reenacting the events of Jesus last night with his disciples. We begin by reenacting the meal Jesus shared with them. As we prepare to come to Christ's table, let us come recognizing who we are and what we long for. Would you join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin this, this evening? Merciful, mighty, matchless one, you have loved us to the end. There was betrayal in our heart, yet you loved us anyway. You knew we would deny you, yet you loved us anyway. In our selfishness we balked, we objected, we disapproved, yet you loved us anyway. We sought to point the finger at anyone other than ourselves, yet you loved us anyway. Forgive us, we pray. Renew our convictions. Restore our call to service and rekindle our flame for justice that we may once again become your people of peace. Hear and receive the good news. The one who created us has called us. There is now no condemnation, no shame at the table of God. Only the love that makes us whole again. Only the love we offer others. In Christ's name, we are forgiven. us in bondage, but acted in power to liberate us from all oppression. We thank you that Christ, acting in courage and faith, has won for us the victory over sin and death. May the bread and the cup be signs of our renewed covenant with you. And may we ever be faithful until at last we drink the new wine with you and with Christ in the heavenly realm. Amen. Through the cup of bread, and I'd ask you to take it out now, and through the cup of blessing, we participate in the body and in the blood of Christ, ministering to you in Christ's name, I now give you the bread and the cup. Take and eat.
Would you join me now in the prayer of thanksgiving? Almighty God, ruler of the universe, who provides for us the fruit of the vine, we thank you for the mighty acts of deliverance that enable us to cross over from despair to hope, from both brokenness to wholeness, from death to life. We thank you for the deep love of Jesus, which moved him to give himself for the redemption and the deliverance of all humanity, and for the grace we experience in receiving these symbols in the life he gave. Amen. In a dimly lit upper room, a group of friends gathered, a group of disciples ate, a group of men simply did not understand. In a city called Jerusalem, a man was denied, a man was tested, a man was condemned. On a hill called Golgotha, a savior was ridiculed. A savior was whipped, a savior was crucified. Tonight, in a dimly lit upper room, we remember the story. Jesus told them, This very night you will all turn away because of me. It is written that the Lord said, I will strike the shepherd down. The sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I rise from the dead, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true, Jesus answered. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. But Peter said, I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. And all the other disciples said the same thing. We remember the prophecy.
Jesus and his disciples went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to them, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. He began to be very upset and troubled. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death, he said to them. Stay here. Keep watch. Went a little further. Then he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup of suffering away from me, but let what you want be done, not what I want. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray? Then you will fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We remember the prayer. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. Then he came back. Again he found them sleeping. They couldn't keep their eyes open. They did not know what to say to him. Jesus re returned the third time. He said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is about to be handed over to the sinners. Get up. Let's go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. We remember the human weakness. Just as Jesus was speaking, Judas appeared. He was one of the twelve disciples. A crowd was with him. They were carrying swords and clubs. The chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders had sent them. Judas, who was going to hand Jesus over, had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, he said. 
arrest him and have the guards lead him away. So Judas went to Jesus at once. Judas said, Rabbi, and he kissed Jesus. The men grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing nearby pulled his sword out. He struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Asked Jesus. Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you. I taught in the temple courtyard, and you didn't arrest me. But the scriptures must come true. Then everyone left and ran away. We remember the kiss. The crowd took Jesus to the high priest. All the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Not too far away, Peter followed Jesus. He went right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards. He warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for something to use against Jesus. They wanted to put him to death, but they did not find any proof. Many witnesses lied about him but their stories did not agree. Then some of them stood up. Here is what those false witnesses said about him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made by human hands. In three days, I will build another temple not made by human hands. But what they said did not agree. We remember the trial. Then the high priest stood up. He asked Jesus, aren't you going to answer? What are these charges that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I am commanding you in the name of the living God. May he judge you if you don't tell the truth. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But here is what I say to you all. From now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One. You will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes. He said, he has spoken a very evil thing against God. Why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard him say this evil thing. What do you think? He must die, they answered. We remember the judgment.
Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You are with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before all of them. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then Peter went out to near the gate, where another servant girl saw him and recognized him. She said to the people there, this fellow is with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it, swearing an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you're one of them. Your accent gives you away. At this, Peter began to call down curses and swore to all of them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. We remember the denial. It was very early in the morning. The chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they tied Jesus up and led him away. Then they handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests brought many charges against him. So Pilate asked him again, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they charge you with? But Jesus still did not reply. Pilate was amazed. We remember the questions. It was the usual practice at the Passover feast to let one prisoner go free. The people could choose the one they wanted. A man named Barabbas was in prison. He was there with some other people who had fought against the country's rulers. They had committed murder while they were fighting against the rulers. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to let the king of the Jews go free? asked Pilate. He knew that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him because they wanted to get their own way. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd, so the crowd asked Pilate to let Barabbas go free instead. Then what should I do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. The crowd shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Why? What wrong has he done? asked Pilate. But they shouted even louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, so he let Barabbas go free. He ordered that Jesus be whipped. Then he handed him over to be nailed to a cross. We remember the shouts of the crowd.
the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the palace, which was called the Praetorium. All the rest of the soldiers gathered around him. They took off his clothes and put a purple robe on him. Then they twisted thorns together to make a crown. They placed it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they fell on their knees in front of him and made fun of him. We honor you, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. Then they hit him on the head with the stick again and again. We remember the humiliation. Once more, Pilate came out. He said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing Jesus out to you. I want to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Then Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. I myself find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders replied, We have a law. That law says he must die. He claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard that, he was even more afraid. He went back inside the palace. Where do you come from, he asked Jesus. But Jesus did not answer him. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you understand? I have the power to set you free or to nail you to a cross. Jesus answered, you were given power from heaven. If you weren't, you would have no power over me. So the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king is against Caesar. When Pilate heard that, he brought Jesus out. Pilate sat down on the judge's seat. It was at a place called the Stone Walkway. In the Aramaic language, it was called Gabbatha. It was about noon on Preparation Day in Passover week. Here is your king. Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Should I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be nailed to a cross. We remember this sentence.
Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hill, where your blood was spilled. He had to carry his own cross. He went out to a place called the Skull. In Aramaic language, it was called Golgotha. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. Two other men were crucified with him, one on each side of him. Jesus was in the middle. Pilate had, uh, had a notice prepared. It was fastened to the cross and it read, 
Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read the sign, and that's because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in the Aramaic, Latin, and Greek languages. The chief priest of the Jews argued with Pilate. They said, do not write the king of the Jews. Write that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, I have written what I have written. Now when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes. They divided them into four parts. Each one soldier took one part, and all that was left was Jesus' long inner robe. It did not have any seams. It was made out of one piece of cloth from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's cast lots to see who will get it. Now this happened to fulfill that scripture which says, they divided up my clothes among them. They cast lots for what I was wearing. So that is what the soldiers did. Now Jesus' mother was stood near the cross. So did his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother there. He also saw the disciple he loved standing nearby. Jesus said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Later, Jesus knew that everything had now been finished. He also knew that what, what, that what Scripture said had come true. So he said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, and they put the sponge on a stem of a hyssop plant. Then they lifted it up to Jesus' lips. After Jesus drank, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. We remember the cross. The upper room is empty. The smell of freshly baked bread and the sanguine scent of wine, recently poured, dissipate through the open window in the corner. The plates, washed and dried, sit dutifully on the shelf, having served their great purpose. The chalice is empty and the only wine left slumbers in the remnants of a weary bottle on the table. The supper is eaten, and the crumbs of bread that fell to the floor have been swept away. Slivers of moonlight faintly shine on the barren floorboards where the dust of their feet mingles with the dirt of ages past. The laughter that rang so joyfully in the room as they gathered, echoes only in the minds of the slightly intoxicated guests who are now fast asleep in beds around the city. The questions and confused what's 
that came after accusations of betrayal, our distant memories, and the promises of faithfulness have evaporated into the windy night like the snores that now reverberate in their bedchambers. Prayers have been said. Promises have been made. Prophecies have been fulfilled. The upper room is empty. Now there is darkness. Now there is silence. Now there is a cross.